Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin. I'm Ryan. And we're here to talk about toys. So we've got Ryan here from the Talk About Games podcast. Yeah. How's so, that going? So it's going great. We just did our 10th episode. So I guess that puts it place in time yeah. when we did this. We, uh, Mike Matei and I, each pick a game book club style. Okay. And then we talk about it. You know, it's talk about games. It's pretty obvious what we're doing. And we do weird picks. Like we just did one recently where he picked Yar's Revenge and then I picked Metroid Dread. Okay. So, you know, he's picking an Atari game. I'm picking the latest Switch game. Right, right. You know, so with Talk About Games, you never know what you're going to get. Nice. Yeah, and we shoot it right here. Yeah. You know, I, I always I always see in the comments, people are like, oh, is that from the Cinemassacre podcast? Right. Oh, is that from Peg Warmers? What is that? Yeah. It's like, yeah, we all kind of shoot in the same place and we have a cool way of setting it up. Yeah, so everybody kind of does their own setup. So the, yeah. the posters swap out and the stuff on the shelf change. And it's kind of fun that way, though. Definitely. All right, so our first segment is news. And this is kind of YouTube news, but I thought it was funny because... It kind of connects to the early days of this channel when we were doing SEO toy review. Yeah. So YouTube is going to demonetize low quality kids content. Low quality. Low quality. So okay. there's there's they have like a whole list of standards, but it involves things like the the videos have to have some sort of pro social message. They have to tell kids uh, in some way to be good people or to um, encourage learning and curiosity diversity, equality, and inclusion. And there's a few other things in there. Yeah. But, like, that's that's going to be the level of the standard for quality, I guess? It's 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 interesting. So so this tells me a few things, right? The first thing I think is, like, YouTube believes that they can determine the content of a video with relative certainty, mm. right? Because there's no way that they're going to hire a bunch of different people to watch, to watch every video. It's impossible, Right. So it's it's interesting that there that there is a model somewhere or an algorithm that says this is about inclusion right. or education or all of this. It's amazing. <laughs> Do you just need that word and the like auto close captioning picks up like diversity and now you've been right? deemed a quality well, content? W- what I think is interesting is you're probably going to see a lot of people trying to figure out exactly what it is. Yes. What's the special sauce? Right. Because I think. Low quality might not be the the right term. Um, that's the headline, yeah. Right, because it's they uh, valued uh, content that has has a, a positive influence. Yeah, is probably more. Yeah, and it it definitely takes you back to the eighties when absolutely everything was a twenty two minute toy commercial with like an educational message slapped at the end. Yeah. And knowing is half the battle. Right. So <laughs> uh, every episode of He-Man had a moral. Yeah. Like in today's story, Tila learned that, you know, she should be a better person and not be frustrated or whatever. Right. G.I. Joe always had like safety messages, right? Like don't hide inside a refrigerator that's in the backyard. You could get stuck in there or pinch your nose when you have a nosebleed. Um, the Silverhawks had space facts. Right, yeah. Copper Kid would get quizzed on what the planets were and things like that, and I'm sure there's a million other examples. But it it definitely feels like that. So you can have your your like standard kids YouTube thing that kind of keeps their attention, but then at the end you got to make sure that like in today's lesson we play in today's video we played about diversity and it's a good thing we included everyone. You know, so so I got I got two things. Number one, absolutely, you're right about the. Uh, things but i'm thinking about video games okay so you go to an arcade in the 90s and you're gonna play ninja turtles and you're like i'm gonna play the ninja turtle game and you sit down and what does it say it says don't do Do drugs drugs. right so obviously you know this public good idea right is nothing nothing new that's for sure right and the second thing i'm thinking is um the censors the comic code Mm, yeah so the comic code, they were looking at that and they said, hey, you know, these comics are getting getting a little crazy. These mm-hmm. crazy hippies are coming up with these, you know, comics now and we got to think about that. You can't have zombies, but ghouls are okay. Right. It's, it's weird. <laughs> it didn't right? make a lot of sense. It, right. So, so media targeted at children has always had the, the you know, the bumpers were up. There was yeah. some type of thing. And – um. I guess this shows that YouTube's kind of made it. Okay. Yeah. For kids, right? How many kids you're you're in Target or something and you see the kid has an iPad or a tablet or right. something like that. And it, it's become like a primary form of entertainment 
on par with the comics and the movies and Mm -hmm. the television. So absolutely, it needs to have that. The question is, is can modern AI, modern machine learning, modern all of that, do that at scale to have the positive effect that they're trying to have? Yeah, so the the 80s shows all employed like child psychologists and and people like that that kind of looked at those messages and, and gave them a thumbs up and, right. and said it, yeah this is a quality sure piece but the YouTube it, it it literally will just be some sort of AI thing so that's kind of a, a challenge to it of, of is this right you know just because they said diversity or they said um, you know let's play with our all our friends like does that yeah. make it work you're you're trusting you, you know it's it's kind of like like you're, you're it, it it's all unattended it's all yeah, like yeah. you have these people throughout the entire world which different value systems For sure different cultural norms all of that all come to youtube to make content to to make money yeah i guess just just to be fair right um, I, I'm sure there's some organizations that are you know state based or altruistic, but there's a lot that are kids' content makes money. Mm-hmm. We're gonna make it. Right. You got algorithms, and then are those people good actors? Well, we know they're not because we had Anna and Elsa and Spider Man. I'm scared yeah. to say it. Yeah. On this channel right now. Right. Right. No, because there was all kinds of crazy stuff going on. There was all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Right. So I think it's good, which is weird because I'm a pro YouTube guy. Right. Right. So I'm I'm like I want everybody on YouTube to be as successful as possible, ourselves included. I want people to be able to make the content they want to make. I don't want them to have to alter it. But in this, when children are involved, it's like, let's let, let's let's look at this, you know, from a wide range, not just the profit motive or the growth motive. Right. Yeah. No, I think it. I think it's a good thing. I'm just not sure how it will roll out, whether it will be as effective. Like, I think it will be really interesting to see when this goes into effect, what happens to old content on channels. Like, if if people that made toy stuff will right. will notice that their things got, got yeah. dinged. And I would argue that the content that you made, which is on this channel, you know, I would argue that it was... I mean, I mean, some of it was, was throwaway, you know, but yeah. I would argue that it wasn't harmful. No, I don't think so. And I'm wondering what the line is going to be. Right. Because there were certain videos that I did that were like a straight review, which is disposable content. It's sure. like you watch it and you go, oh, that looks like a cool toy and you move on. But there were also videos that were very much like exactly what they're talking about. Imaginative play. There was like a story. Right. And, you know, it's the Ninja Turtles having Thanksgiving or, yeah. you know, the Power Rangers having, I don't know. There's a, a Ninja Turtles thing about uh, – election day like i i right. made a whole bunch of these goofy holiday videos well wow. and uh those kind of things like I, i'm not going to say they're like shaping society they're not sesame street but right. you know what i mean like they're they're not garbage content you know yeah. so i don't know it'll, i i think it'll be interesting to look at all those and see if they all get demonetized or if they continue to be not that they're getting any views right. but like just to see what happens with them it's interesting yeah all right, so our next segment is new to the collection. Okay. What do you got? So I got a, got a bunch of stuff. I, I kind of feel 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 bad. I've been like in the toy buying spirit lately. It's been bad. Can we talk about that for a split yeah, second? Sure. So, so normally I don't mind at all. Like yeah. I just buy toys and I don't really think twice about it at all. And everything is switched to like pre-order. Yeah. And nothing is impulse buy anymore. Nothing's like, oh, every week I get like a figure here and there as I find them. It's now just like $100 and I buy the whole wave. But it's constantly like <laughs> one company drops a pre-order for something and the next week the next company drops a pre-order for the next thing. And then you just wait six months for the thing to show right. up. But I, I feel like I'm – I feel like I'm spending more money. I don't know if I am. I probably am spending the same amount of money, but I feel like I'm spending more money because I'm watching the the bill in one chunk of buying the whole wave right. at a time instead of buying like, oh, today I found this figure and next week I found two more of those figures, you know, and it's just sort of being spaced out. It It's odd. So, so I'm going to tell you a story. Over the weekend, I go to Toys R Us and I was t- t- sending you things. Not Toys R Us. Or sorry, Walmart. Walmart. 
I went to Walmart. I, went I to wish toy, you went to Toys R Us. I went to the toy aisle at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> which is Toys R Us Toys now. R Us That's now. the best we can do, right? Other than the toy aisle at Target. So, and I, I walk through, and me and my son are going through, and I throw Rodimus uh, mm. Prime in the cart, and I throw uh, Megatron from the Beast Wars line in the cart, and... Then I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, wow, those Mattel uh, Marvel people in like the mm. retro packaging are cool. And I'm like, I'm getting like Black Panther and I'm getting Invisible Woman and I'm getting Iron Man. And my other son's like, Iron Man, yeah, let's go. And I get to the end of the aisle and I have all this stuff in my cart. And I'm like, I- <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> so I put it all back. I get my one son an Iron Man and I bought these three things that we're going to talk about on the episode. Okay. Um, because I, I was, I was looking at it. I'm like, I don't need, I don't need all this. I have, I have three Rodimus primes, mm-hmm. right. From various different lines yeah. and things. It's like, do I really need the fourth Rodimus prime? That's what makes it so hard <laughs> though. Is like a lot of this stuff I'm pre-ordering is just another version of a thing I already own. Yeah. Like mass universe origins. I love that line. But I already have the vintage figures. And then, like, Super 7 puts out all these ultimate figures, which are fantastic. But they're just upscaled versions of figures I already own. And I'm like, what am I doing? (laughs) I I picked up the Netflix He-Man. Oh, okay. They had him with the big sword. He's cool. Super cool. I haven't watched the show, but the figure's a cool figure. And I looked at that, and I'm like... Hey, hey, hey to my wife. I'm like, hey, this is really cool, right? And then I was done with it. Like yeah. I had my my fill of it. Um, but despite all that, and you know, we're gonna talk about those. The character that I that I did buy was a pre-order one. Okay. Just like you're saying. And I bought barbecue from the uh G.I. Joe classified line. Right. And it just came in the mail. It just finally started shipping, yep. Finally started shipping, and I got it and I looked at it, and it's awesome. I love this line. We, we Classifies talk- is great. Yeah, yeah. We talked about it. If you haven't seen our other episode, Ryan and Kieran were on. It's actually the very first episode of Peg Warmers. Yeah. And we talked about the classified line up to that point. Yeah. Um, and now there's a ton of new figures because we had Hasbro PulseCon and they released a bunch of other pre-orders. I, I checked the uh- – so so I got that, and I'm like, oh, I got to update my – I have a spreadsheet. Right. Because I'm like to that point with that line, not not with any of the other stuff we talked about. With that line, I got a spreadsheet, completionist. Um, I'm like, oh, I got to add some. Oh, I got Tiger Force. Mm. Oh, I got Python Patrol. We're going to get Croc Master now. I'm like, wow. Yeah, so it's interesting how they're doing a lot of these repaints. Some things are getting repainted. And some things, sort of the repaint version is coming out first. So yeah. Outback is coming out in his Tiger Force colors. Yeah. You know they'll release him in his standard colors later. Mm-hmm. We're getting a Viper repaint yeah. as Python Patrol. And then the Bat seems to be simultaneously coming out. As Python Patrol as Python and, regular. and regular. I guess it's the Target one and the not Target one. Right. Right. So I bought a bunch of the Target one. I really want a bunch of the regular one, but I have a feeling that both are going to be really hard to get. Yeah. So the pre-order for the Target came out, and I got one through Hasbro Pulse's website, and then somebody sent me a link to ha- where it was on Target's website. So I ordered two from Target, and then I got my fiance to order two more, and I figured if I don't, if I decide I don't need five of these, I can return one or wow, sell it to somebody so else. You're the reason I'm not getting one. Yeah, I am the reason. I see how it I is. I am the reason. So, yeah, if you need one, I, I probably have an extra one. But <laughs> I actually didn't look carefully at the Target one. I knew the one I ordered from Pulse was Python Patrol. The Target one I thought was the regular one when I first ordered the two and texted my fiance and was like, just order, just go to this link and order two of these for me. And then later on I looked at it and I was like, oh, this is – it's all the Python Patrol right. one. Um, which I like the Python Patrol one. I'm, not, I'm less excited for that yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, partly because it was never a Python Patrol character before. Right. It's a great repaint, though. Like, it makes sense for Hasbro to every Cobra figure just make a Python Patrol repaint at some point. Right. Like, uh, in the 25th anniversary, or not 25th, but the modern era, uh, probably Rise of Cobra or something, there was a Python Patrol Croc Master. Oh, cool. So we'll probably get a 
Python Crocmaster since they've released him in his regular colors. Right, because I guess they're done with the Cobra Island stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder I, – I I was looking at it. The Alley Viper was on the, like, Cobra Island box. I guess it was on the regular box too. Yeah. But I'm guessing that he's – that they're just going to be a... I think they're just regular releases. Regular releases. Yeah. But the Alley Viper and the Bat are going to be such a pain to get. Because they're yeah, going to... As gonna soon as it. they hit, people will just buy out everyone. Yeah. But 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 anyway, I, I am shocked that now two years in or something, I'm still into it. Yeah, yeah you're still excited about it. And yeah. The movie toys are sitting a little bit. Yeah. But, but I don't think it's bad. I still think the line is really healthy. And I'm not seeing like cases of them i'm seeing like a case of them right which is a good thing because then there's a chance that'll move yeah um hopefully there aren't cases in the back that they just didn't bring out of it um and, I, you know I, I feel bad that that movie didn't work better because right. i was hoping it would really launch yeah gi joe you know up, up to the next level but i mean when they're putting out when they're putting out bats and vipers right. and stuff in the main line and then you get these movie characters i totally get it yeah Right, I just I just hope that that the powers that be realize these are two different things. Yes. Although we are seeing breakers, mm-hmm. um, but you know, which which Baroness was like, you never saw Baroness, right? Now she was, but she was Target exclusive, and I don't think Breaker is an exclusive. Right? No, I've seen him other He's places. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So it makes him a little bit easier. But he, that figure's been odd. There was like a bunch of discount sales on him early on. Like there were weird ways. And, and I don't know all the details of it, but there were like certain stores had them cheaper for a little bit right right as they hit. Now, it doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you discount it? But right. Uh, but that's an amazing figure too, though. Like yeah, the, like the the detail they're putting into these guys is just phenomenal. Definitely, and and you definitely see the progression from the original Roblox to the Roblox we just got. Mm-hmm. It's like wow, this is this is cool. And they're they're really toning down the like the sci fi Fortnite. Yeah, video game aspects that the original wave had and really just making like amazing collector versions of the original figures like barbecue is so much more true yeah to his original figure than say that original roadblock or the original duke yeah i i feel that way i feel like the first um you, you know we talked about fortnite inspired and all that i feel like the first line was trying to be in concert with the video game yeah because it definitely felt like the game characters right but then as the game kind of aged, they moved on and, and you know, now we're just getting Joes. Yep, That's, they're just straight up. They're straight up. It's classic look and feel, I guess. Well, and that's, I mean, I, <laughs> I think that's what the diehard fans want. Yeah. And I don't, I don't really know whether the sci-fi boots and things like that really made the kids go, be more into it or not. Like, I think, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a huge factor. Yeah. I still don't think we're at the point where we're going to get like the cool mini vehicles, like the yeah, probably not. But um, I, I I think it's awesome that we got a gigantic vehicle sized crocodile coming. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's that's crazy. Like that's going to be a crazy thing to show people, right? That you got the you got the Fiona is like that big, right? <laughs> and it is nice that they're doing an articulated alligator because like the original Croc Master. Is a, a neat concept, but like he's got this brick alligator. Yeah. And it, as a kid, you know, you, I played with the alligator. I played with all the dogs, but yeah, they yeah. all were so static. Right. Um, and there's a great timber in the line. There's a, you know, there's this good Fiona. Like, I'm really hoping that we can get like Mutton Junkyard and, and Long yeah. Order and some of these other classic. Well, we're getting freedom with spirit. So, like, they're really starting to do a lot of those. Characters and I, I know for me personally, the the guys with pets were some of my favorites as a kid. Yeah, they're oh, gonna have cool. to do shipwreck in a future wave with Polly. Like, he's he's we're at that level of like they did Duke, they did Flint, you know. Yeah, like he's got to be in the next two waves, I think, of that tier of characters. We got that, you know, they went all out with the with the Cobra, with the like high end Cobra yeah. people that now like like where's where's Hawk, where's right, you know that kind of thing. I'm I'm ready for that. Yeah. If there's a brand or a an umbrella of brands of like kids media that seems to always be evergreen, it's Pixar. Sure. Right? Like Disney is just perfect at making characters that are popular forever. Like kids still wanna be Cinderella for Halloween and that movie is ancient. 
Yeah. Right? But it's like, it's that blue dress from the movie with the white wig. Like they, or the yellow wig. They sell that exact costume. It's not just princess. It's Cinderella. Yeah. So Pixar is kind of their, the second generation of that. And recently I was at Walmart and they were blowing out these Pixar figures that are pretty movie accurate, pretty, um, well articulated, nicely detailed. Uh, and I picked up Buzz and Woody. There were a few other characters. I think the back here shows like Duke Kaboom and Forky and Mike Wazowski and Boo and then some of the Incredibles. I got on this one uh, Wally and Brave. Okay. Yeah. So I thought these were pretty decent action figures. They're they're not um, electronic. They don't light up or anything like that. Like Buzz doesn't have his dome. Right. But they look good. They look like the characters from the movie. And they're blowing these out, and I was just kind of shocked because it was pegs of them. Right. And I was I was really surprised because the Pixar stuff just seems to be popular. And then maybe a week later, I went in the store, and they were full of Pixar toys again, but it was just a new line. So right. I don't know whether the sales velocity wasn't good enough on these or they wanted to bump the price point up, but now they have interactables. Okay. And the interactables are Pixar characters – that can talk. They play sounds, but they also sense the other toys. So, so they're like those Hallmark guy, the Hallmark uh, Christmas snowmen. ornaments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so when Buzz is near Woody, not only would he say, you know, to Infinity and Beyond or whatever, but he'll also say, you know, how's it going, Woody, you know, or yeah. whatever. Um, I don't. I was just shocked. Like, right. If. If these didn't sell, and I don't know why they were on clearance. Was it just because the next line was coming out? But if these didn't sell, why would a higher price point Pixar toy take its spot? Um, Because this was a spring-summer toy, and now we're getting closer to Christmas, Christmas. Yeah, and they wanted to be at that higher Christmas price point. Right. This Maybe. was like the summer birthday. That's what I'm th- – like this is – yeah, this is the This summer. is a $10 birthday toy but for Christmas we want the twenty dollar right. item hanging or something. Really? So, so what did, what did you pay for this? I think I paid like five bucks a piece for them, but Whoa. they were clearanced out. You know? Wow! So that's crazy. So, so it was probably like a ten twelve. I, yeah, I think they're a ten twelve price range type kind of thing. thing. Yeah, and and they don't look bad. Now, granted, a lot of this is painted on. And, yeah, they're yeah. they they have a little bit of a cheap feel to them. Sure. Um, because they're the harder plastic, so they feel a little hollow, but they look good. Do you know what I mean? And they're and they're poseable, so it's. I wouldn't complain about that. I have to say, if I went into like a five below or something like yeah. this, and I saw one of these on there, I'd be like, wow, that's value. Right. Right? But if a kid sees this next to the talking one, maybe they thought, you know, once we the can't co- have- cool talking one comes out, we we can't have two Woodies. One of them's like the not so good Woody. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the super Woody, right? That makes sense. Yeah. So our main topic is Star Wars Mission Fleet. Yes. And Star Wars has been merchandised forever in a ton of different styles and scales. The three and three quarter inch figures and the original 12 inch action figure doll style. Then the micro collection metal figures. Then they just disappeared from store shelves. Then in the 90s, we had Bendy guys and we had Power of the Force 2 and we had micro machines and we had Action Fleet, right? So. Almost every form factor that's ever been done has been done, and they sort of found a like an in between form factor. Yeah, for this. yeah, it lo- it looks like that. I remember there was like like this is a very not not a very often used toy form factor. Yeah, I would say. I mean, you see it with like like kids like little kids toys, right? That sort of thing. But you know. As all the movies went by and you had Rogue One and you had all the like mainline Star Wars toys, I was frustrated about how unplayable they were. Mm. I felt like the Star Wars toys we've gotten over the past decade-ish, maybe five to seven years, haven't been the most fun. Well, the new movie stuff, they they dropped articulation. They went to five points of articulation for a lot of that yeah. stuff, right? Which is retro, but I don't think it's that appealing. Right. Especially for th- – this is the biggest movie right. that's out in the b- 
biggest toy, the toy line that launched. Yes, it movie, all. movie merchandise is, and and so now you have stormtroopers that can hold guns like this, and Jedi's who can hold lightsabers like this. It's just it's just kind of boring, I think. Yeah, it had its place. Um, these figures are better articulated than those movie figures. They're better articulated. Um, they come with a lot of accessories. accessories. Like you look at Mando right here; he's got the super cool. This gun's awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. in the show, Disin he's disintegration just rifle, whatever you call it, blowing thing. things away. He's got the pistol that you that you would love. He's got a cloak and the 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 jetpack. Jet you got you got Baby Yoda here. It's from something that actually happened in the show. Yes, and so <laughs> here, let me see that for a split second. Yeah. The there is a spring loaded missile launcher on the side here, and that. Definitely is something they pack in on things aimed at kids. Yes. The spring loaded missile launchers. But it's easily removable. And it makes sense because Star Wars vehicles have weapons on them. Right. Right. What did they do with the movie figures? Everybody came with some god awful gimmicky thing just as big as this. Yeah. That instead of attaching to a vehicle, had to like be held by the guy. And then there were like instructions on how to combine them into a droid that didn't look like a droid a star wars droid at all right. like this is so much better because if you're the adult collector you can just pitch this yeah. if you're a kid you can plug it in anywhere you want and arm the vehicle up but there's like true detail to this you you do have the sockets you know they don't those don't disappear but there's real detail there's like wiring underneath it's got moving pieces all the guys are removable i mean mando has articulation at the wrist like, right <laughs> That's pretty cool. Like I, I, I'm definitely digging this line, and it it premiered, uh, or at least came into my view at Toy Fair 2020. Like okay, a month before COVID shut everything wow. down, they had like the Millennium Falcon and the X Wing and the Darth Maul set and a few other right. ones there. That was like the the first wave. It was really when they were showing off the Mandalorian toys, like the Baby Yoda interactive yeah. toy that's been a huge seller. Um, that was really when those things kind of first got introduced. And what I love about it is this is a vehicle centric set. For sure. We got TIE Advanced with, um, Vader mm -hmm. in it. We got the X-Wing with Luke. We have all kinds of Jedi star fighters and we got Kylo Ren in the TIE Whisper, which, come on, man, this is, this is the TIE Interceptor with some red on it. Yeah. But the TIE Whisper, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, so so we got all these cool vehicles. They don't take up your whole house, right? You, you know, it's it's not like I have a thing that's this big that doesn't fit in a toy box. I care about these things. I have kids. You're right. You know, um, we got characters from all different Star Wars, including the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian, we got multiple paint versions of Mando. Mm -hmm. There's there's actually a set with all the main characters. Okay, with uh, what is Dune, uh, Car Car Dune, yeah, yeah, and uh, the the little guy, I, yeah, Quill. yeah, yeah. So we got all the characters from that show. We have new looking stormtroopers. We have old looking stormtroopers. They're all articulated. They all have guns. I just looked at this, and like I told you early in the episode, I looked at Rodimus Prime. I looked at the Beast Wars guys that I already have in a box somewhere from when they first came out. Right. I looked at the Masters of the Universe, and I was like, what would be fun? To play with the kids. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, this is awesome. Look, look at this. Look, the gun comes off of this and it could be standalone. Yeah, too. that's cool. You know, that's kind of cool. It's got like a canopy that flips up. It's got a lot of different pieces. It's very, even though it's super deformed, like that's not the right. Right. It's real chunky. It's chunky. So it could fit in this box. But I get this box, you know, it was under $20 and I, you, you know, I get I get Obi Wan Kenobi. He looks like the one from the show that the kids are actually watching. Mm -hmm. I have no complaints. And then when I finally got to see like the actual characters here, and like like that's a cool rideable. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And I get a stormtrooper, and this thing was like fifteen bucks or something like that. I'm like, I have no complaints. Where I didn't touch the the movie, the Rogue One, the Black series. 
all that. I'm like, what am I going to do with that? My kids aren't going to play with it, and I'm going to throw it on a shelf and whatever. I have a bin of all that stuff, <laughs> and it feels oddly incomplete because they didn't bother to make toys for the last movie. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I got old man Luke, and I've got Ray in a couple outfits. and But it's so odd now that it, it isn't like a complete toy line. It, it's yeah. two-thirds of the movie. And I have the Solo stuff and the Rogue One stuff. But, yeah, I, I like that this kind of hits the highlights. Because for a kid, kids aren't consuming Star Wars the way we did. Where right. we watched those first three over and over and over and over again. Then we got excited for the prequels and got let down by the prequels. And then realized, eh, they're you know, they're okay. Because then we saw the next, we got excited for the next round. and got yeah. uh. So it's neat that for kids, they get to watch all the movies in rapid succession and and pick whichever one they speaks to them because kids do kids don't mind Jar Jar or the Ewoks or whatever it is that Bugs fans right today watching all of them the kids just enjoy the whole thing or parts of the whole thing or whatever right but this line kind of allows kids to collect the coolest parts of all of it i do like that it's a ve- vehicle line because i think vehicles is one of the strengths of star wars mm-hmm. i mean that's the reason they picked 3 and 3 quarter inch for the original figures was they knew the ships were going to sell, so we got to be able to put the guys in the ships. And that's what you're doing here. You're buying all the ships. You're getting the guys that fit with them. Uh, the closest thing you can get to, like, individual figures are, like, guys with backpacks and things that – like, giant jetpacks yeah. that strap on. Like, um, I think Ahsoka and Boba Fett and, and the, some stormtroopers. Um, shock trooper. The shock trooper, yeah. They have, like, yeah. small personal craft type jetpacky. Right. But they're, they're still pretty substantial, yeah. which is neat. Um, I like that it shows you on the side of the package, like, what... What it's from. What it's series. from. Like, this is from Clone Wars. Right. You know, this one's from Rise of, Rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Um, which, yeah. So, and, and you know what's funny? This, my son picked it out because on the Rise of the Resistance ride in Disney, which yeah. we were just in Disney, he, uh, Kylo, attacks you. Right. In this. And that's what he knows it from. He doesn't even know it. He's never seen this movie. He just movie. knows it from Disney. Yeah. He knows it from Disney, which is which is funny. That that ride <laughs> may be the legacy of those three movies. Like cuz that ride yeah. is phenomenal. It's unbelievable. And and that may be the most popular part of that time period of Star Wars going future. You yeah. know, like going forward. Um I don't see people being diehard fans of those movies, but people will be diehard fans of that ride. It's funny that ride in the middle of it has a photo op when you end up yeah. being taken, right? And there's all captured the, all the stormtroopers. There's all the stormtroopers there, and that that photo op appeals to it, no matter what you're a fan of, right? The, the Empire captures whether it's Mando or Luke, yep, or Ray. You're going to end up captured on some ship, yeah, with the stormtroopers and the shields. If you have not been to Disney, <laughs> like you I, I don't we're not overselling this ride. No. Like it's it's fantastic. Like you feel like there's laser blasts going over your head in parts. Yeah. You feel like you are flying in a spaceship through space in part. Like it's frantic and then there's these weird calms like the photo op. Yeah. There's parts where you're like in a corridor and Imperial officers kind of make fun of you if you're if you're not being quiet or not yeah. doing whatever they want. Like it's it's bizarre in those moments, but just so much fun. My my son yells out the we're we're in the the Imperials are taking us to our cell. Right, right. And my son yells out, he looks and there's numbers on the wall. And he's like, he says, there's like seven and then three. He's like, seven plus three is 10. And the Imperial turns around like on a dime. And she says, she says, you would make a good officer if you didn't make such poor life choices and join the resistance. <laughs> you know? And it was like an unbelievable moment. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm like, That's cool, though. Yeah. yeah. I, I had a blast on, on that ride. I went on it. I think I got to go three times when I was there. Wow. And it was it was earlier in the ride, but it was like a weird, like, fast pass, somebody's too young to ride, kind of a ride swap glitch thingy. Oh, weird. Like, my niece was with us, and she couldn't ride on half the rides, but, like, we would get in line, and then they, so then you could go back later. Yeah. It was like a weird thing. So anyway, we got to ride it several times, um, 
and it was phenomenal. And it doesn't it doesn't wear out. Yeah, like, getting to go on it again is just as much fun as the first time. Right. And there's two tracks, so it's like slightly different. Not, I never not majorly different, but I never got to go where you go through the doors after like the imperial you land on the mm. ship i never got to go where you would go straight okay i always got to huh. go right okay so i've never gone that way and i i know it must be different even if only slightly yeah it's not majorly different but it's slightly different it's it's kind of like if you do the the millennium falcon ride you get the different jobs yeah but in that ride some of the jobs are n- way less fun like being the pilot on that ride is so much better than yeah. the other positions but the 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 rise of the resistance the whole thing is just I mean, you're watching a Star Wars movie, but it's you're in there. It. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. And I, I like when, when you, you know, towards the end, when you finally get in the pods, the resistance people are like, come on, come on. Like they're yeah. go fast, you know? Yeah. So the the crew is a big part of it. Cr- yes. The ride system is is amazing. Um, you know, the ride system is amazing. Yeah. But the crew. They make you feel like you're there because yeah. when you could just take forever to get out of the ride or you could goof off in the hallway they're kind of like keeping keeping you a little paranoid because they're like kind of berating you or keeping you frantic like we gotta go we gotta go you know and that really does help sell it i think yeah it does it it doesn't feel bad that it's like yeah i can't stand with these stormtroopers all day we have a ride to do right but they're not saying we have a ride to do they're saying rebel scum go this way (laughs) (laughs) yeah i like it I, and I like this too. So one of the of the things that I thought of as soon as I saw these was Galactic Heroes, and I yeah. brought I brought one of these guys with me. I was never a huge fan of this line because it's so kiddie, no articulation. You can't take the accessories out of their hands. They're all these goofy, like super wide stances, but they're cute. And I had a handful of them, and that's kind of what I thought this was going to be. And when I got like this Mando set. I was really blown away because it's actually a pretty decent two and a half inch action figure. Yeah. Like his feet are big, but they're not insanely big. You can move his legs independently, which is better than Imagine X, which I love Imagine X for like a kid's right. fun action fig- figures, but they have the, the conjoined legs so they can sit or stand, but not like kick. The fact that he has, you know, rotating wrists. That's really cool. It reminds me of the figures that you get with the mega constructs. Yeah. Yeah, but a way bigger. more durable and a yes. little bit bigger. That's yeah. true. But like it's similar articulation, similar number of accessories, that kind of thing. And and I have a ton of those. Yeah, I love the mega construct stuff. Yeah. Um there's actually an episode of a show I don't remember which one to look for, but um Mike Burrow and I talked about them because sometimes those Mega Constructs figures become peg warmers. Some ways just disappear. Right. And other ways just kind of sit for some weird reason or end up at five below. So we've talked quite a bit about those on here before. I ended up getting all the Star Trek ones, the Borg okay. and the Picard and stuff. But I felt like they were in stores for a long time. Yeah. So maybe they were one of the slower selling there, there was a wave, ones. There was a wave with Scareglow and Stratos and one of the Ninja Turtles and some of the X-Files stuff. And it like... They they went to five below and you could I mean they were just there forever. Wow! But it's like good characters though because like Scareglow is one of the more popular not a list right. man guys. Yeah, it, it was really odd. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so I bought this one. You know, this was I bought this set a while ago and it was before a lot of the kind of Mandalorian action figure stuff came out. Like the there was the kitty role play and the interactive yeah. doll. And I was looking for some sort of Baby Yoda that would kind of scale with maybe the three and three quarter inch figures and stuff that I have. So that was one of the the real reasons I bought this set. Oh, cool! Because um, it had a little Baby Yoda. He's not articulated. Uh, yeah, I don't think he. I don't think his head rotates. But he's got the little shifter knob thing in his yeah, hand and stuff. That's so cute. I thought he was pretty cool. And and then I was pleasantly surprised that the whole set's you know quality. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, so is this set, cause my, my son has a play school Millennium Falcon. Yeah. I think that those characters that Chewie and Han bent at the waist so they could sit. I think they do. In the vehicle. They may have been special for the vehicle. Yeah. I don't think any of the other ones could sit. I, I have to tell you that we have had that Millennium Falcon 
since my one son was very little and they still play with it. Yeah. So that has been a toy in our house for years. Okay. So that was a really good, really good purchase. Right? Now, does yours <laughs> pop apart sometimes? Yeah. Uh, no. Well, there's the the little middle. You can pull the little plastic thing and it locks it. Okay. So the so I have that Millennium Falcon, but it's missing a lot of the parts. Somebody like gave yeah. it to me, and um, my my future stepsons play with it. And sometimes they'll like force it, and the hinge like pops apart. And I don't know whether it was like damaged before I got it, or if that's just a feature to keep it from getting like broken. Right. But this one, when they close, a lot of times the the hinge like pops yeah. apart. Um, but they play with it, and we don't even have the guys for it. They just like uh, they'll drive cars up the ramp and shove them in it and fly it around or anything. And it's got it's got the sm- it's got all the parts. Yeah, it's got the 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 probe. It's got the the chest. Board, right yeah it's, it's got, got the smuggler compartment yeah the smuggler compartment it yeah it's neat it's a it that was a good line but i like how these are a little bit more yeah bridging the gap absolutely um or hasbro had done some power ranger stuff when hasbro bought power rangers um they they the mattel fisher price Imagine X Power Rangers ended. Yeah. And Hasbro came out with something that was kind of similar, and they stayed away from Mighty Morphin because that was what Mattel had focused on. And they were doing um, Wild Force and some of the other things. And it didn't last real long, but I I would love to kind of compare those figures because I don't think they were quite... I think there was a a Power Ranger generation between this and this, but I'm not quite sure where it's at because I never picked up those... Oh, Those Power Ranger figures, yeah. Um, but I think they, I think they knew with Star Wars collectors, like the attention to detail in the the sculpt was going to be important to, to mm-hmm. make the adults want to get these figures and vehicles. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they they sold me, and I, you know, I had a lot of options, right? There was a lot of cool stuff when I was buying, and I'm like, no, this is this is neat. Um, I I I think that this should be a form factor that more toys embrace okay because we're getting a lot of like a lot of like reaction style figures now Mm -hmm. where they're you know there's smaller form factors so they can be cheaper they have they're cool they're great characters all of that but they don't have a lot of accessories they don't have a lot of playability they have basic articulation and and while that reaction stuff is kind of cool for collectors who want uh, cheaper options or they want something that maybe they're not opening right they want it carded that kind of thing I think for you know you know t- toys for play or toys that are a little more you know less collector focused like when we were kids we had lots of accessories mm-hmm. we had lots of articulation relative to the technology at the time and I'm I'm happy to see this I I, I think they're reasonably priced too yeah like if this thing was thirty bucks I'd be out right right but it's not thirty bucks and that impressed me. Because there's a lot of thirty dollar vehicles out there, you know. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I think it's interesting too that it's called Mission Fleet. Yeah, because it certainly makes you think of Action Fleet, which was yeah. the micro machines. Galoob was making like little tiny spaceships, and then they kind of upscaled it to have super tiny action figures in it. And this this is bigger scale, but it still yeah. feels a lot the same. And so it's interesting how the name kind of has that callback to it. I think that if I had, like, a Galoob-sized, like, oh, it's Luke, and he's got a lightsaber, like, I'm out. Yeah. Like, it was fine for me for, like, the little army guys. Right. Because I felt like, like, an army guy, it's, it, 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 it doesn't have that play aspect. But for somebody who's, like, a hero character in a fantasy, you want to have articulation. Yeah, you want to be able to change the pose. You want to be able to have them, you know, not hold their lightsaber while they fly the ship. Right. You know, because... Then you need open canopies on everything yeah. to fit anything in there. And the guys become less interchangeable. Like, this guy might fit on the speeder, but he's not going to fit in the Falcon cockpit. Yeah. So I, I have a list of the, the characters they've made. Let's see if we can think of, like, I don't know, a few more characters they that they need to do that they okay. haven't put in this line yet. So uh, there's the Luke Skywalker. There's a Darth Vader, a Sokatana, Boba Fett, Chewbacca, the Clone Trooper, the Shock Trooper. The Biker Scout, Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan, Darth Maul, Captain Rex, The Mandalorian, Kroll, and Kylo Ren. I think 
give or take. I might have missed somebody, but that's right. basically all the characters. So who you, you gotta you gotta develop the next wave. Who who are we missing? Who are the most important Star Wars characters we haven't put out yet? Um, I think you want um like a Jabba, like a like a mm. Tatooine thing you get some tuscan raiders nice you get like that sort of thing maybe you do like a luke speeder where it comes with luke um in his like clothes from tatooine okay and a tuscan raider or you do a, a bantha with the t- tuscan raider or you do jabba with the uh twi'lek uh mm. what's his name uh bib fortuna bib fortuna i think we need jawas yeah. Like, we oh, need that'd a be sand cool. crawler. Yeah. <laughs> but we also, we need a Princess Leia. Yes. And the only vehicle that is, like, super perfect for her, as far as, like, an action toy, would be, like, the Endor speeder bike. Yes. But I think people would want her in the white. So, yeah. could they do a, a Tantive 5? Oh, that's cool. And and give you, like, a, a Leia and, like, a Rebel Trooper, maybe? Because she's the only one of the original, oh, we don't have the droids. It, does, oh. does R2 come with the X-Wing? He's probably, like, built in. Yeah, it's... But you need a C-3PO somewhere, too, like, right. eventually to hit those, like, core yeah. core characters. But that's, it gets tricky. With... That's interesting. We have Cara Dune, but we don't have Princess Leia. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Do we... Do you do, uh... Uh... The Naboo Starfighter with, uh... Like with little Anakin? Or... Anakin or something like that. This is pod racing. Right, because you have to... You, we have to... We can't wait it to the original trilogy. No, no. You need right? stuff from everything. Actually, the pod racers are very interesting looking action uh, vehicles. Yeah. So, like, a Sebulba and an Anakin pod racers would be pretty cool. Yeah, the, the pod racer... It would definitely fit in a I set so. like that. Yeah, yeah. the the pod ra- the pod racer is neat. What do you do from the newest trilogy? Like, so we have the tie advanced whisper it's Snoke, where his head comes off. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. What other like what what is another like those skimmer things from the the planet with the salt on the ground with the with the like peg that goes yeah, down? Yeah, that like, was like I I didn't uh, like that design of a vehicle. Uh, that's at weird. All. I mean, I can't imagine yeah. doing like the horses from from the um the, the cas- horses they ride on yeah, the well, it's not casino it, it is a casino but yeah. uh, whatever that whatever bite that I can't even think of the name of the planet right now right but like i don't know what you would do those, those movies didn't have as many signature they had great looking characters yeah. and great looking creatures but not as many like signature vehicle chase scenes well here's here's one you could do you do general grievous Okay. In the format where the where they have the backpacks, okay. like in that, but it's just him and he's big. Okay. So the accessory is he has all the arms. Okay. And stuff like that. Because having him be like a big figure next to these guys, like double would height, neat. would be kind of cool. And then you can put, um, you can put like Obi Wan with him, or you put like you know the the figure yeah. is somebody else. They're not really making. Like, I would say that the prequel trilogy is the least represented in this line because we just have Maul. Because yeah, this is this is Clone, Clone Wars, Wars. Right. You know? Well, th- there is a Stormtrooper and a Shock Trooper. Yeah. And those could be Clone Wars or they could be prequel. I don't know how they're packaged. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of under underrepresented. But right. we, we mentioned the, the pod racers or the Naboo fighters, so it's definitely something that's easily fixed. Yeah, but the the... The Corellian Corvette with Leia would look great next to the Razor Crest and yeah. the uh, Millennium Falcon. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, there you go, Hasbro. We've mapped out your next year for you. We, we did all the work. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we've covered this line pretty well. I think so. I it, mean, let us know whether you guys are collecting this or if it's a pass. I would love to hear from people that have kids. Like, are you loving this line? Because it it's great to share with kids. Absolutely, yeah. I was I was blown away. I didn't know it existed. Okay. And the, my my first exposure to this was I'm in Walmart. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna call my good buddy Kevin Jones and get on the show to and talk Ryan, about it. Ryan texts me like, "We got to talk about this." I'm like, "On the show or just like talk about it?" He's no. like, uh, "Either one." Yeah, right. I'm like, hey, some people need to know that this exists. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for hanging on the pegs with us. We'll see you next time.